It's been nearly five years since that crude oil pipeline in Marshall Township burst, sending millions of gallons of crude oil into Kalamazoo waterways. Tonight, 24 Hour News 8's Casey Jones takes us on the path the oil took. A then and now look at where we stand today. From what we could find, this is the intersect, the markers of the Enbridge oil line and our feet, ankle deep in Talmadge Creek water. And it was just about this time of day, July 25th, 2010, when that crude oil line burst somewhere right here, sending millions of gallons of oil into the creek, into the Kalamazoo River, and a frantic effort to stop it from getting to Lake Michigan. Animals, foliage, and most noticeably, this water tarred black with that shiny oil. Now, almost five years later, it's a then and now, a 38-mile journey on the Enbridge oil spill. It smelled bad. The stench and the, the sight of it. It smelled horrible. The whole town? The whole town. It's like a spaceship landing. Nobody knew what was going on. A ride along down the creek. You'd never guess just five years ago it was as you heard it being described. A black cloud of oil shadowed the water as it crept towards larger systems. Undetected for 17 hours, neighbors knew something was in the air. They just couldn't figure out what. And there's a very, very, very strong odor of either natural gas or maybe uh, crude oil. It was the next day the pipe burst was discovered. And five years later, it looks almost brand new. Everything looks back to normal here on Talmadge Creek. The foliage is green. The butterflies are buzzing around the air, even tadpoles in the water. But we didn't have to look too closely to the banks here to notice an oily sheen in the creek. Enbridge says it could be microbiomatter and that there's zero tolerance for any level of oil in the water. We trudged back down the creek, the banks and waters, the wildlife, they got more built up as we went along. Our first stop on the largest inland oil spill in U.S. history was complete. It was on to the next. Sailors landing. We got our boat ready to go and dropped her in. Some of the hardest hit areas waited just upstream. It's the end of the line for the Talmadge Creek right here as it meets the north part of the Kalamazoo River. Five years ago, the Talmadge Creek here was a tributary of oil, adding to this larger body of water with a direct shot for Lake Michigan. Then, big booms, industrial skimmers. The spill had consumed once pristine waterfront properties. Panic set in. Now, the kayaks resting, ready to ride down the river, unrecognizable to those black days of summer. Further down the river, the waterway too, almost unrecognizable. Mark Caraba knows the water. He gives fishing lessons. Green grass and clean water is nice to look at, but the fish tell the story, he says, of the river's bounce back. If it's cold, clean water, then trout can exist there, and the fish, the bass are existing here. I mean, there, there's fish here. Uh, to fish it, if you fished it a lot years past and you came here and fished, you, you would not recognize that there had been damage done. A restoration project completed by Enbridge, just two miles from Talmadge Creek, a dredged river, new rocks and trees along the built-again banks. Brett Reiser, a conservation worker for Calhoun County, says we won't know exactly for another 10 to 15 years whether the restoration actually works. Where there was a complete restoration, um, they had to remove a lot of... Uh, large woody debris and they're going to end up having to bring in some of these things to bring back the biota or the aquatic wildlife and that just takes time. The Ceresco Dam, where oil made a quick and slick path through just five years ago, gone. Enbridge got rid of the old dam, freeing up the water. Fort Custer State Park in Kalamazoo County, traffic back open, recreation ready. The signs then, the signs now. Morrow Lake. Our last stop and where the oil took its final rest. Back open. Work, though, still left to be done. People in the area say despite the disaster, Enbridge has given the waterways and town new life. The town, it prospered. Not only was everybody from Enbridge coming in and staying and renting and everything. I mean, it was probably the best thing that Marshall could have had this disaster, but what they did is cleaned it up so well that it's gorgeous. Enbridge still has much to do. $62 million in natural resource damage settlements were reached just last month. Enbridge will pay that to restore wetlands at Fort Custer and other areas. Monitor fish, track turtle health, add large woody debris to those certain areas, with a long list followed behind that. Oil and water don't mix. They never have. It took 38 miles of the Enbridge oil spill to teach a community why the hard way. But it's given them a map now with how to handle it. Casey Jones, 24-Hour News 8.
Our, ser our series continues tomorrow. In 2010, when someone reported a smell to dispatchers, first responders, they checked it out, but they were unable to identify what was wrong. What have local authorities learned since then? That's tomorrow on your News 8 at 6.